When I was an undergrad, I took a class uh, called Readings in Sports Literature. That was my senior year. And it was really interesting. I was interested in sports. I liked to read. thought it would be a great class, and it was. One of the books we read was written in the 1950s by a guy named Bernard Malamon, and it was called The Natural. And it was about a baseball player. It's a fictional story about a baseball player, very talented, but because of a series of misfortunes, he didn't get to the major leagues until he was quite old. But even then, he was so talented, he became a star. And he got his team to the big game. And they, they win this game, they win the pennant. Well, of course, on the eve of the big game, the bad guys come, the gamblers. And they offer him a lot of money, thousands of dollars, to throw the game, to strike out. And sadly, he takes the money. So he gets into the big game. He gets up at the crucial situation, and now he changes his mind. Now he's going to try. So in effect, he's cheated twice. He cheated with the cheaters, and now he's going to cheat the cheaters. So he gets up to swing for the fences and strikes out. And the team loses, and the bad guys win. And you get to the end of this book, and you just feel dirty. You feel cheated because it's not supposed to end that way. The good guy is supposed to win. The guy in the white hat should win the game. The bad guys, the guys in the black hats, they're the ones that are supposed to fail. We've been taught from when we were kids, if we work hard and play by the rules and do the right things, we will be rewarded. And when we don't, when we make bad choices and decisions, we will be punished. And when that system doesn't work, as we saw this morning, we can get very upset because that's not fair. And we are taught to believe in fairness and justice. But our readings this morning remind us that God doesn't always work that way. He doesn't always operate in that system that we understand as fairness and justice. In our Old Testament reading this morning from Jonah, Jonah's upset because God wants him to go preach to the Ninevites. Terrible people, rotten, awful people, pagans. And he doesn't want to go. And that's why he spends three days in a fish thinking about it. So when he finally does go and gets there and preaches and they repent, he's upset. Because God, they didn't deserve it. That's not fair. And in our gospel reading from the vineyard, the people who come at the end of the day, in the 11th hour, and the hours, by the way, started at 6 a.m. So these are the people that came at 5 in the afternoon and worked for an hour. They were paid as the same as the people that had been there since 6 a.m. All of us, especially now at Harvest, know what it's like to be out all day in the hot sun, sweating and laboring and getting dirty. And you're going to pay the guy that shows up at the end the same you're going to pay me? That's not fair. That's not right. So how do we pull this together? What is God trying to tell us in these readings this morning about fairness and justice? We have to think about that from two perspectives. One is God's perspective. And the other is our perspective looking up to God. Let's start with God's perspective. When we talked about Job a few weeks ago, and all the things Job went through, remember one of the things we talked about was Job went through all these things and got to the point where he just said, you know what, God is God. I don't understand, and I don't necessarily like it, but God is God. He can do what he wants. In Bible study this morning, we read from Isaiah. God is the potter. We are the clay. He has the right to make us and form us as we will. He will. And we do not have the right to say to him, the pot does not have a right to say to the potter, I don't like the way you made me. So it is perfectly within God's authority and sovereignty to say, this person will be blessed with riches and wealth. 
while this person will live in poverty. Or for God to say, this person will live a life, a long life of health, while this person will be sick and die young. Darlene was watching a show this week on Judge Judy, the profile. I think everybody knows who Judge Judy is. And I wasn't paying much attention until they got to the point where they said Judge Judy makes $47 million per year. $47 million. And you hear that and you think, that's not right. Nobody deserves that. That's not fair. But again, God is God. And if God wants to bless Judge Judy with $47 million a year and me with $47 a year, God is certainly within his right to do that. Now, when we think about our perspective, looking up to God, that's where we run into trouble because that's where we want to bring our concepts of justice and fairness before God. And it goes something like this. God, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. I'm certainly better than this guy over here, right? I come to church a lot. I give money. I support charities. I help old ladies across the street. Therefore, I deserve to be blessed in this life and for you to reward me at the end of my life by letting me into heaven. That is a very, very pervasive attitude. Very common. You see it all the time in movies, television shows, books, magazines. How do you get to heaven? You just be pretty good. The only problem with that is it's completely unbiblical. Completely. What does the Bible say? There is no one good. No, not one. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the very best we can do is what? Like filthy rags in His sight. When we look up to heaven and ask God for justice and fairness, we are actually condemning ourselves. Because if God gives us what we deserve, that's punishment and condemnation. Because He's the holy and righteous and perfect God. And we're sinful. Instead, what we should be doing is praying for God to give us what we do not deserve, which is His grace and mercy and love. Another way to think of it is this. If we could get to heaven on our own, we wouldn't need Jesus. But we do. These two readings point out the fallacy and the problem we have of asking God for justice and for fairness. But they also point out his incredible grace and mercy. The people of Nineveh did not deserve to be forgiven. They were awful, rotten people, pagans. They were the nation that later would go in and destroy Jerusalem, flatten the city, and take the Israelites into exile. They deserve nothing but condemnation. And God would have been perfectly within his right to say, I sweep you off the earth. But he didn't do that. God was merciful and gracious. We look at the story of the vineyard. And to put that in a spiritual context, we look at that and say, now wait a minute. You mean to tell me that somebody comes to life, somebody that comes to repentance late in life, still gets saved? That somebody who lived a horrible, rotten, evil, terrible life can repent and sincerely repent toward the end, and he's going to be in the same heaven that I'm in? Yes. Thankfully. Remember last week we talked about the prison guard in the German concentration camp. The terrible things that he did. He became a Christian. And God saved him in his grace and mercy. And the ultimate example of that, of course, is the thief on the cross. Lived a terrible life. We don't know exactly what he did, but he was a criminal. He deserved death. And because he sincerely repented, at the end, he was able to hear Jesus tell him, today you will be with me in paradise. 
That should not fill us with resentment and anger, but rather with thankfulness. No one is beyond God's grace at any time. All of us with our friends and family, many of whom are outside of God's grace right now, there is still hope for them. God is still seeking them. There is nothing you can do to put you beyond God's grace and love and mercy. That's what we should be focusing on. Not what's fair. Not what we deserve. They did make the natural into a movie in the 1980s. But of course, they had to change the ending. You cannot keep the same ending. No one would go and see the movie. So in the movie version, the guy, of course, the ball player, rejects the gamble. Oh, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to take the money. And then he gets up in the big game, and he's bleeding, by the way, from an injury. He gets up and hits the home run to win the game. Exciting. It's a great finish. It's a great ending. It's a great movie. If you can stomach watching Robert Redford try to play a baseball player, it's a very good movie. <laughs> but see, it doesn't matter if he strikes out or hits the home run. It doesn't matter if we strike out in life or hit the home run. It doesn't matter if we make $47 million or $47. It doesn't matter. Because God isn't giving us what we deserve or what we earn. He's giving us what we do not deserve and cannot buy and cannot get our own. And that is His love and grace and mercy through the blood of Jesus Christ. And that is ultimately what's fair because it's available to 